Well, as I said, this is uh, my trip out west. I'm catching up with Travis and his uh, Trek four-wheel drive out at uh, Yulo, just west of Kunnamulla. Um, I'm driving in the first part by myself from Ipswich through to um, Yulo, and then I'll catch up with them and then we'll go further west. An interesting thing I'm wrestling with as I'm driving alone, um, thinking to myself and playing, and, uh, and playing in my mind, is this concept of bush and country and remote, regional, rural, um, those sort of things. Um, at the moment there's a lot on in um, Queensland here, certainly in New South Wales as well, about the drought and the plight of the farmers and things like that. So I'm very much interested in, um, in, in seeing what I can see, as is the Premier at the moment. Uh, she's uh, sent off to commissioners to have a look at the funds that, um, that can go out to the communities and what benefit those funds can deliver and uh, derive. I've chosen Warwick as my first stop to post my first blog uh, because Warwick has a bit of a thing to me. Um, as a child it used to be a place where if we drove south or west, west with my family, we get to Warwick and then you start seeing signs to um, Stanthorpe, Armadale, Sydney and possibly even Melbourne as you go further. And that's always been to me a bit of a, oh okay, this is the gateway to something else. So today is my gateway, but Warwick is going to be out to um, Gundawindi today. Uh, tonight I'm going to stay there and then travel on through Nindi Gully, and then from Nindi Gully up to Kanamulla, and then out to Yulo on Sunday or Saturday. Um, so behind me, Warwick Police Station means something to me a little bit. Um, that was my first contract management job. I was superintendent's rep on the refurb of the old police station and then the, the erection of a little extension at the back, the police station annex, uh, done by Watson Hughes at the time. You'll, if you ever come up here, please, please be sure to look down the driveway and have a look at the, the building down the back, but also have a look at, and just behind the courthouse here on my left, your right, um, is the um, historical toilets. There's two toilet blocks there. The, ha the police station itself and the courthouse are listed as heritage listed. Um, but at the back, there's two toilets, little old stone block buildings um, that was on my project and they're heritage listed. So I've got heritage listed toilets on one of my projects. Um, so my, my idea is looking at how and when rural and regional and remote and things like that kick in and I'm trying to work out what those indicators are. Is it the loss of 4G? Is it the loss of 3G? And um, people say, oh when you go west you'll lose telephone and things like that. Is that the mark of remoteness? Um, is it the car parts because we're driving the car, reliant on the car and all that sort of stuff and if anything happens to the car, uh, how remote are you from, uh, from fixing that problem? Fuel, petrol, gas, uh, those sort of things. At the same time, it's all about spending money in these communities and boosting uh, what, the, what, the, what you can give to the community as a tourist. So I'm interested to see what the locals think of us tourists blowing in, in our gaily coloured shirts and things like that, not wearing our chambres and our uh, uh, jeans and thing, big buckles. Um, so I'm interested in that. What is the hallmark of a once you get out into the countryside and people's concepts of that change. There's a lady called B who's got a website where I found just by googling um, where is remote Australia and uh, she con con conjures up the context that we talk, we talk about the bush, we talk about remote, um, we talk about the outback. So to, someone's, to someone somewhere is, this is the bush um, but once you get used to that bush environment um, that no longer is bush and is your home and it's the next bit, it's the next bit. So someone's city, someone's home is, is, um, is one, one area but then they look out looking west in, 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 the, in the instance of where we are on the east coast you look west and you're going into the bush and then beyond that is, is outback. But you get used to the bush, you get used to the area you're in, suddenly the outback becomes bush and further west is outback. Um, so what is this concept? Uh, for me, I live in um, Ipswich, on the border of Ipswich. John Oxley came up to, sit, to, dis to find a settlement for a penal colony in the 1820s. He chose Brisbane and reported back. He went up as far as the Brisbane River, up as far as where I live, and that was then remote. But on his way, he found two convicts uh, that had uh, allegedly blown off course from Sydney, from the Sydney penal colony, timber getting. Now, he came all the way up here in his boats and his equipment and gear and only to find two blokes wandering around the bush with the Aborigines and um, that was their home but it was his remote 
so what's what? Similarly, Burke and Wills in the 1860s, 1870s issues, um, they carried all sorts of things. They even carried drays that were convertible into boats. They carried dining tables, equipment, big dinner gongs, all that sort of stuff they carried. They were going up through the center of Australia, going hopefully to get to the uh, north in the, um, in the Gulf areas. There was some conjecture as to where they should go, but they went up to the Gulf of Carpentaria. Along the way, they found it, Aboriginal peoples. Um, and as is true probably today, but very true then, they didn't take heed of how the Aboriginals were living off the land and using the land and all that sort of stuff. In fact, they even came across a young uh, Aboriginal male and his wife and their baby just before they hit the, um, the, the fresh-ish, the brack water, brackish waters of Car Gulf of Carpentaria. So they went all that way and there were still people living there. To him, it was the remotest place on earth. To others, it was their home. So let's have a look. What are the indicators? To me, maybe one of the indicators might be vanilla slices. See where um, the vanilla slice ends at the bakery as we travel west. Um, my, my little folly of chasing this outbackness may well end when we get out to Birdsville um, because I think that once you get out there and you're going past that into the desert, well, obviously there's no argument that we are remote, um, but it's the farming lands, it's the farmers, it's the cattle, it's the sheep, it's the horses, it's the cars, it's the vehicles, it's the clothing, it's, it's all those things, the banks, the telephone, even telephones, um, street telephones. So let's explore it together and let's find out as we go out and about. Cheers.